Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Shalini and I make videos about technology, data science, professional development advice, and other videos about my experience in tech and what I've learned. Definitely check out some of my other videos if you're interested in learning more. But for now, let's get into this Q&A video. So I have been to the Grace Hopper Conference for the past two years, and I will also be attending the virtual Grace Hopper Conference this year. Over the past few years, I have definitely learned a lot about the whole conference experience and how to navigate it. And it can definitely be overwhelming and unclear on how to navigate things. I've also attended a few virtual conferences over the past year. So based on all of these different experiences, I wanted to help out a little bit. A few weeks ago, I posted in a few different groups asking what questions you had about the Grace Hopper conference. I got a bunch of DMs of different questions, so in today's video, I will be answering all of your questions as well as other popular questions I've seen from different groups. Before we get into it, a few months ago, I made a video about the Grace Hopper conference and how to prep for it beforehand. Make sure to check out that video after watching this video. I'll make sure to link it right up here. Also next week, I'll be making a video related to being productive at online conferences and how to make the most of the conference experience. So make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on those tips. But for now, let's get into the questions. There are a whole bunch of different questions ranging a variety of topics. So here are the questions in no particular order. Where is the schedule for GHC? Where can I find it? So the schedule of different sessions is posted online. I'll make sure to link that in the description below. There are a bunch of things that are going to be happening every day of the conference, from keynote speeches to talks, workshops, networking sessions, the career fair, and basically a lot of different things. Make sure to check out the schedule before attending the event. That way you can plan out what your conference is gonna look like. Do we have to register ahead for individual sessions in the agenda? How do you sign up for sessions? So yes, you do have to register ahead to attend different sessions in the agenda. To do this, first go to the same schedule link that's in my description below. Click on the already registered button, then sign in with your email and confirmation number, which you should have gotten when you registered for the conference. After you're signed in, then go to the bottom of the page and you'll see a button that says modify registration. Make sure as you go through all the sections, don't change anything until you get to the sessions tab. On the sessions tab, you can then select whichever sessions you want to attend given that there's space. Just make sure that the sessions don't overlap in terms of timing. Otherwise, when you try and go to the next page, you're going to get an error. After you go through all the sections, confirm everything, and if it went through correctly, on the original page that you started on when you logged in, there should be a section at the bottom which lists out all of the different sessions that you were signed up for. Do I need to sign up for the career fair? So if you already have a ticket to the conference, you don't need to sign up for the career fair. That is already included in your ticket. Based on your ticket type though, you might might only have access to certain days of the career fair. Here is a picture of the different ticket types and what days you would have access to the career fair. The only ticket type that has limited access to the career fair is the partial access ticket. All the other ticket types have access to all the days of the career fair. I've seen people talking about seeing and receiving invitations from companies. Where do I submit my resume and profile so companies can find me and reach out to me? So the Grace Hopper resume database is the best place for this. I'll put a link in the description below, that way you can access it but make sure to put your resume and update your profile as soon as possible. Companies have started reaching out through the database and more will be reaching out over the next few weeks leading up to the conference. You want to make sure your resume is up to date and in the database most importantly, that way companies can start reaching out to you. While you're submitting your resume on the database, check that the formatting is all good. There have been some issues with the resume database and the format of your resume can sometimes get messed up. So be ready to mainly input some of the information on your resume, that way it's clear and readable and recruiters can find your information. If you're watching this and you haven't done it, pause this video, go and do that and then come back and play the rest. The other thing that can help people see if you're going to be at Grace Hopper is putting a tag in your LinkedIn profile. 
So hashtag GHC20 or hashtag VGHC20. Something along those lines, you just want to add it to your LinkedIn header headline section. Companies also use tags like this on different social medias in order to showcase different events that they might be hosting, jobs that are opening, and people that might be at the event. They also reach out to people with these tags if they see that it's in your headline. Is GHC only about software engineering roles? Nope, GHC doesn't only have software engineering roles. There are a bunch of other roles that are there. There are a bunch of people recruiting and giving talks about SWE work and jobs, but there are a bunch of other roles at the conference too, ranging from data science, data analytics, hardware, cybersecurity, and so much more. There are also different workshops and session tracks that highlight different tech fields. There are too many to list though, so I'll put a screenshot of all of them right over here. What is the chance of landing internships for data science slash analytics roles? So data science is a very hot field right now. And over the past two conferences, I have personally recruited for a bunch of different data science related internships. And I've also seen a bunch of data science internships pop up over the past few years. I would say there's a pretty good chance of landing data science internships based on my experience. There are a lot of different opportunities available at the conference. Are there any Discord servers for this year's VGHC? There are a bunch of Discord servers, WhatsApp groups, and tons of other groups for this year's conference. Most of them are posted in the Grace Hopper Celebration 2020 Facebook group. I'll make sure to link that in the description below. I highly recommend joining that group if you aren't already a part of it. You can search up different WhatsApp, Discord, and other groups from that main Facebook group. How long before the conference do recruiters typically let people know if they've gotten their interviews pre-scheduled? So companies start reaching out to people sometimes months in advance, but more often it's a few weeks before the conference. So around now, about the time I'm posting this video. When companies reach out, they might ask you to schedule an interview or they might not. It really varies from company to company. Some companies are determined to hire at the conference while others are just looking for people that they might be interested in in the future. Interviews from the conference also have a very wide time range. Some interviews happen before the conference, some during, and some afterwards. This also varies from company to company and what their whole recruiting cycle is like and how many spots they have for internship roles or new grad roles or full-time roles. Once you sign up for an interview though, the overall process is pretty quick. There isn't an exact time frame for it, but it's usually pretty quick, less than a few months for sure, based on my experience. How does job hunting happen at the conference? I know that companies can reach out before and during the career fair to schedule interviews, but is there anything I can do on my end to increase the chances of being noticed? So there are a lot of different ways to approach job hunting at the conference. The main way is going to the career fair and going up to different company booths and connecting with people and asking about different opportunities. The other ways are going to events that the company might host outside of the career fair. This is a less crowded and slightly less intense environment to interact with companies at the conference. They will be a lot more willing to dedicate time to talk to you about their experiences without waiting and looking at the huge long queue of people that they have to talk to at the career fair. Also, networking in general is such an underrated part of this, but so important. You can start networking right now through the Grace Hopper Facebook page that I mentioned before, link in the description. There are literally thousands of people there and everyone is so willing to share about their experiences and everyone loves helping each other out. So make sure to connect with people through that Facebook page. So connect with people and you never know what might happen from that. Also connect with people on LinkedIn. A lot of people attending the conference have the relevant hashtags in their headline to show that they'll be at the conference. I am applying through a sponsor. So I was wondering if it is possible to update the schedule after registering. Yes, so you can sign up and unsign up for a specific session through the same way that I talked about earlier in this video, 
where you go to the event site and you click modify registration and you go to the sessions tab. And you should be able to do this regardless of being sponsored or not. The main difference is that your ticket type might look a little different from everyone else's, but you still have access to all the same sessions as everyone and the overall process is still the same. How should I plan out the conference? Do you have any recommendations for scheduling sessions and how to prepare beforehand? So in general, I think it's super important to focus on what your goal of the conference is. Otherwise, it's very, very easy to get lost with all the number of things that the conference has to offer. Are you going to find an internship, a full-time job, network with other women in tech, give a talk, get inspiration. Whatever your reason is for being at the conference, after you've thought about that, the next step is to look at the different events and see which ones might be relevant related to your goal and which ones may not be relevant. If you're recruiting, you might want to attend the career fair and different events that companies host. If you're looking to learn more, maybe you'll attend different workshops and talks based on what you're interested in. If you're looking for inspiration, maybe you'll attend the keynote and the Abbey Award winner sessions and different workshops and mentoring sessions. If you're looking to connect with people and help close the gender gap in tech fields, maybe you'll attend events, network with people, and attend diversity and inclusion workshops and talks. Maybe you're looking to do a bit of all of these and you'll want to split your time between different things. Based on what your goal is and what you're interested in, make sure you sign up for the appropriate events to make sure that you're using your time wisely at the event. How do I approach different sessions in the career fair if my goal is to get an internship? So based on what roles you're interested in, whether it's a software engineering internship, a data science internship, a product management internship, whatever internship it is, make sure you research that role, research the relevant companies that you're interested in, and make sure you connect with those companies and visit their booths in the career fair. I would go to the companies you're super interested in on the first or second day of the career fair. A lot of companies host networking sessions during the conference so you can talk with recruiters and employees in a different setting, and a lot of companies also interview people at the conference. By going and visiting their booth early, you can increase your chances of being invited to any sessions that they have and maybe being interviewed at the conference. A lot of companies also reach out after the conference if you visited their booth. It really varies from company to company, but if you want to increase your chances of getting some internship, I would try to visit as many booths and companies in the career fair in order to try and get those contacts. Also edit your resume, that way it's ready to send to any recruiters or employees that ask for it. I made a two part video on how to make sure that you have the perfect resume. I'll make sure to link it up here. That way you can make sure that your resume is perfect and ready to go. Do you recommend attending any events? So regardless of what you're doing or what your goal is for the conference, like I just talked about, I would highly, highly recommend going to the keynotes and the Abbey Award winner series. There is a lot to learn and the people who speak at these are so inspirational. Hearing their stories and their motivational words really inspires me as a woman in tech. And honestly, that's what I love about the conference. It's just a great community of women. Do we have to approach the company and recruiters or will they shortlist our profile from the resume database? So it's a mix of both of them. In terms of companies reaching out, companies will sometimes mass email people or they will shortlist people to talk to either before, during, or after the conference. This reaching out could be in the form of event invitations, asking you to come by their booth, asking you to apply through a link, asking you to sign up to interview with them, and other things. It really depends on the company and it varies. But regardless, if companies reach out to you, you should still go to the career fair and stop by their booth to talk to recruiters and different employees just to show interest and to learn Learn more. This part is up to you and if you want to stand out to the company. How is the virtual Grace Hopper conference planned in terms of the interviews and how can we approach the company? Typically at the conference, companies come in with set job openings and a specific number of people that they can interview at the conference. And this is just because of the physical limitations of how many interviews that they can have on hand at the conference, as well as the length of the conference. They don't have time to interview thousands and thousands of people. 
Usually there will be some company representatives at the actual career fair booth in order to answer questions and to help you learn more about the company and to learn more about you. And there will be other company representatives who are actually conducting the interviews during the conference. If you have interviews scheduled currently, good luck. Just make sure to follow any instructions and guidance that the company has given you related to the interview. If you don't currently have any interviews scheduled but you want to have some, go to the company booth and talk with them. Learn more about the company, see how the role that you're interested in works at the company, and connect with the people who are there that way you can potentially interview with them during or after the conference. How much of an advantage is it to interview during the conference versus after? So interviewing at the conference is definitely stressful, I'll be honest. It's a very, very quick turnaround. It's essentially a very accelerated interview process. I've seen interviews where it's your typical three rounds of interviewing, but each interview occurs on a different day of the conference and you could potentially be leaving the conference with a job offer. I think there are multiple things to consider here. If you're prepared for interviews, if you know what you want to do and where you want to work, I think interviewing at the conference is a good idea. You will save a lot of time because of the accelerated nature of the interviews and interviewing earlier is good because those spots are less likely to be filled already by the company based on hiring counts. However, if you aren't as prepped for interviews and you think that using that extra time will help you be more prepped, I would take that extra time. Ultimately, not doing well in the interview won't help you, even if it is an early accelerated version of the interview process. Taking the time to make sure that you're ready and you're prepped for the interviews will be a lot more helpful and you will be able to feel better and do better in the interviews. So basically the difference between interviewing at the conference or after the conference is the amount of time that the whole process might take and how well prepared you think you are. Where can you see interview slots for the event? How do I sign up with companies for interviews during the conference? So there isn't a specific place where you can sign up for interview slots. Companies reach out before the conference and sometimes they ask if you are interested in interviewing with them. And that's a way to get an interview slot. The other way is networking through the career fair and finding out about company interview times through the event. If you go to a company booth at the career fair, they may tell you about other events that they are hosting outside of the career fair and potential interview and application opportunities that you can do. I will also say that not having an interview at the conference and not signing up for an interview slot during the conference is completely okay. It's not the end. The conference is only a few days long and companies only have a few spots during this time for thousands of people. That's why a lot of companies reach out before and after the conference in order to continue the interview process because they physically cannot fit that many people during the course of the conference. So if you don't get an interview slot at the conference, that is totally fine. There's a good chance that the company will take down your information and reach out to you afterwards. When applying to jobs, which is better? Applying through the portal or applying on the company website? I would apply to both in order to just increase your chances of being noticed. Sometimes things that happen related to GHC happen in a different pipeline compared to normal applying. So I would just apply to both and see what comes out of it. Do sessions that have reached capacity ever reopen up for spots? Or do you just have one chance at registering for them? So there's a chance that sessions will open up based on if someone unregisters for the session. In the past, there used to be a waiting list of sorts because some people wouldn't go to the event that they signed up for. So then based on space, they would allow people from the waiting list to go into the event. I don't know how this will be replicated online, but there's a chance that if the event isn't at full capacity yet, you could be let in. You don't just have that one chance for registering for events. A lot of people are still figuring out their schedules and they are signing up and unsigning up for different sessions. So just keep a lookout on that session page and see if any of the sessions that you're interested in free up. Are tickets transferable? Can you sell your ticket? So this year tickets are not transferable. You cannot sell your ticket to someone else. I don't know why they're doing it this year, but I have two guesses. Number one, it's a lot harder to manage things when everything is online. And number two, 
in the past people used to buy tickets and then resell them to others for a much higher price which kind of defeats the purpose of diversity so it's possible that they're putting in new measures to combat this if it's an emergency and you really can't go and you want to give your ticket to someone else I would reach out to the conference people and see what they say. When does the career fair happen? So the career fair will be happening on September 29th, 30th, October 1st, and 2nd. And so those are the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of the conference. If you have a ticket, you can attend the career fair and based on the type of ticket you have, you might have limited access to the career fair. Based on the GHC website online, it seems that the only ticket that has partial access is the partial access ticket. The partial access ticket only has access to the career fair on Tuesday and Friday, but all other ticket types have access to the career fair on all four days. How and where would the booths and virtual career fair take place? How do you interact with companies at GHC? So at the time of making this video, there haven't been any specific links released in order to join the career fair and join the conference. Although this will probably change in the next few weeks leading up to the actual event. Based on other online conferences I've been to though, there will most likely be some kind of portal or website that you log into based on your registration information. And then based on your ticket type, you'll have access to the career fair as well as the different sessions that you signed up for, which are part of your ticket. There will be virtual booths of some sort, kind of like a main page and then there's a list or small little pictures of the different companies which you can then click on in order to join a queue of people in order to talk to the actual company representatives. Usually there's a chat box of some sort that way you can interact with different people. There's also a video option similar to how most video meeting platforms work. What is the difference between a session and the career fair? So both of these get confused a lot and there is some overlap between them, but I think it's easier to explain in terms of what happens in person and then translate it to the online version of the conference. So in the past, the conference has consisted of many different things and that part has not changed in the virtual version. So the career fair is in the expo hall and there are a bunch of different booths so you can talk to different companies. Outside of the career fair, in different rooms, there are a bunch of other things happening like the keynote speakers, the workshops, the different talks, networking sessions, mentoring sessions, lunch and evening events, and more. Sessions refers to all of these smaller events and you usually have to sign up for specific sessions like I've mentioned earlier. Why aren't companies reaching out to me? I'm stressed. What if I don't get any interviews at Grace Hopper? So first I would check that your resume is in the resume database and make sure that the formatting and everything is correct because that can mess up if companies see your resume or not. Also make sure that your LinkedIn is up to date. Check your spam folder. It's possible that the email service that you're using is classifying these mass company emails as spam. Also, based on what type of roles you said that you're interested in on your resume in the database, some companies may or may not reach out to you. For example, if I'm looking for a data science role, companies that want to hire software engineering interns may not reach out to me. There is usually some reason why you may not be getting emails or messages from companies. Regardless if you get emails from companies or not, you can still be a part of the company's recruitment pipeline if you go visit them at the career fair and show that you're interested in the company. The time around the conference can be very stressful and very overwhelming and even just recruitment season in general is very stressful. Just know that you are not alone and everything will work out related to recruiting, careers, and jobs. Also, I want to emphasize that it's a stressful time all around. Companies and recruiters are human as well. They are trying their best to schedule things and it's a stressful time for them too, with managing thousands of people applying and interviewing hundreds of people per day at the conference. If a recruiter accidentally ghosts you or doesn't respond on time, cut them some slack. It's a busy time for them too. Don't be rude or aggressive with them. Don't sound ungrateful. Just be empathetic and relate to them and think about how the conference is going from their point of view. Overall, just be empathetic of everyone around you. It will all work out in the end and I have hope that you will end up at your dream company in your dream role soon. Interviews happen all over the place based on the company, whether it's before, during, or after the conference. This year is also a very unprecedented year with 
the economy and the hiring freezes and everything just being virtual. So a lot of companies might not know exactly what their hiring plans are like for next summer, next year, or even in the next few months. Even if they don't interview you at the conference, I feel like there's a good chance that they will reach out to you after the conference is over once things firm up a little bit. So those are all the questions and answers I have for you today. If you have any other questions or you want to talk, feel free to leave a comment down below and also feel free to PM me on Twitter. I'll link that in the description below as well. Also subscribe. I make videos about tech, my life in tech and data science, professional development videos, personal advice videos, and I started a new series highlighting different women in tech so yeah, make sure to subscribe and check all of those different videos out. And yeah, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!